Hey guys, it's Nicholas here from UpgradeToLife.com and welcome to this video, which is called How often should I repeat my imaginal act? Right, so maybe right now you've come to the point where you studied Neville for a while, you realize that the main method is that we want to imagine a scene that implies the fulfillment of our desire, right? A scene can be congratulation, can be handshake, can be um, anything that you visually also experience that implies that you are already the person that you want to be or that you already have what you want to have, right? This is what we're supposed to do. Imagine, construct, and, and conceive, right? Imaginatively experience, spiritually sense a scene that implies the fulfillment of our goal. And so maybe you have been playing with all of this for a while maybe you already you know consciously did manifest some things but then there's still a small portion of people that keep asking okay but how often should i continue this act right when when is the right time to stop how often should i imagine and you know all of these questions regarding to how, how long does it take and all of this stuff so with this video i want to clear this up because there is only one answer to this but it's not there is a specific number. I'm not going to tell you two times or imagine this 10 times right? because there is no preset amount of you know repetitions that you should go for here. This is absolutely the wrong approach. So let's look at what Neville said when his students asked him how often they should imagine. So Neville said the following thing. When the satisfaction is reached, impotence follows. When the feeling of reality is yours, for the moment at least, you are mentally impotent. The desire to repeat the act of prayer is lost, having been replaced by the feeling of accomplishment. You cannot persist in wanting what you already have. If you assume you are what you desire to be to the point of ecstasy, you no longer want it. Your imaginal act is as much a creative act as a physical one. If, however, you do not reach the point of satisfaction, repeat the action over and over again until you feel as though you touched it and virtue went out of you. This is the most concrete, the, the best summarized answer that I can give you to the question, how often should I repeat my magical act? Again, it's not that you should do it two times and that's the magic number. No, there is no magic number, right? The, the, the best solution, the best answer here is until the point of satisfaction. So what is the point of satisfaction? How can we imagine it or how, what does it mean? Now, let's say, and I know I took this example already in other videos, but I think it's a really great one. Let's say you have the desire for physical food, right? Let's say you are hungry right now. You're really hungry. You haven't been eating for a whole day, right? Because maybe your day was busy. And so you're really, really hungry. And you can, you can try to ignore this, right? You can try to push this away. You can try to let go of the hunger even. But all of this won't be the solution because the hunger, the desire to eat will come back. And when are you satisfied? You know, obviously only when you when you consume the food. So you're really hungry. And then at one point you have a great dinner, a great meal. You eat that until the point of satisfaction, right? Until you feel so relieved, you feel like fulfilled, you feel um, satisfied that you, you stop eating. Right? No one would continue to eat when their stomach is, is full, right? So at the same here, right? When the satisfaction is reached, impotence follow, meaning when you are full, you, you 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 can't keep eating right you're like full like you you're satisfied and same with a desire right when you have a desire and then you experience it over and over again right you you sense this feeling of reality which in just a second i will cover then like never said impotence follows right you're mentally impotent you can't keep desiring it your desire to repeat this act your desire to imagine it again or hear the congratulation words again it will fade away. It will feel like kind of crazy to keep imagining it because you are already so deep down in that conviction that it is done, right? So this will be replaced by the feeling of accomplishment because you cannot persist in wanting what you already have. So if you assume you are what you want to desire to be via your imagination, right, by experiencing a scene that applies fulfillment to the point of ecstasy where you really feel so relieved because you are literally just experiencing it then you no longer want it. And now here comes a really important thing because people say, oh yeah, but my imagination doesn't give me that relief. I need to experience physically. This is wrong. This, this can't be the case, right? The, because 
for the manifestation is the like the the manifestation is the consequence of the wish fulfilled and i do have a video on this explaining that it's a really powerful insight to understand meaning the manifestation is the is again the byproduct is the result is the consequence of the wish fulfilled that already happened within meaning the feelings you feel the relief the satisfaction all of that is not bigger when you experience it in the manifest in, in the manifested world then you first of all experience it within meaning the real relief the real wish fulfilled actually happens within and then is mirrored back to you because as Neville said, your imaginal act is as much as a creative act as a physical one. Right? Meaning when you imagine your desire being done, that's it. It's done. Right? Remember, imagination is real. Imagination is spiritual sensation. Imagination is experiencing something within creation, within consciousness that is not in the physical focus yet. But you still experience it. It is still done. So it's like an like in creative act. You you witness that it is already there. And by you remembering that, by you realizing that, and by you then applying that, when you imagine the end, you have this relief. You have this, like this, this satisfactory moment because you know it is done. And if, right, for some reason you don't reach this point of satisfaction, maybe because your scene didn't apply the end the right way, maybe your scene was like not, maybe your scene was about the desire, but not something that implies the desire, and you feel really euphoric and hyped up and emotional, but not natural and like satisfied that's all all fine because you can you can always change your scene you can always change what you imagine and then you repeat this scene that implies the fulfillment over and over again until you feel as though you touched it and virtue went out of you right until you just have no desire to keep repeating it and this is the the like the golden answer to the question how often should i repeat my magical act right you repeat it until the point of satisfaction. You repeat it until the feeling of naturalness. You repeat it until you know it is done, until you are it. When you when you are it right now, you can't keep desiring it, wishing it. But right? if you're healthy right now, you don't desire health. You don't keep imagining consciously right now scenes that imply you're healthy. No, you just know it. You are in it. Same with any other goal. Right? If it's a general goal, a specific goal, like a like a goal for your body, if it's a goal for a, a possession of something, a goal for a relationship, a goal for money, it doesn't matter. Right? But you 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 imagine it until you feel the satisfaction of it, which will come automatically, right? Don't force it, don't search for that satisfaction. It's not something that you force. It's more so just by you because you do repetitively experience the end being done, right? You experience let's say the congratulation words, right? You hear a friend of yours congratulating you on having achieved X, Y, and Z. You listen to his words. You only, you know, put the words in his mouth that would imply that you are the person right now that you want to be, and then you just listen to him, right? He maybe says, oh, wow, like, how, how have you done this? Or, wow, dude, like, I'm really happy for you. That's amazing. You have to tell me all about it. Whatever it is, right? You just listen to that over and over again until you and then it will come naturally, you will experience it, you will feel relieved, you will feel satisfied, you will feel at some point, why am I still imagining it? I already know that this is the case for me. And this is how often you should do it. And when you reach that, then you, you will automatically stop. Because like Neville said, you then cannot persist in wanting it. Why do you, you, if, you are, if you have reached this point of ecstasy, you then don't want to continue. But if the desire comes up again, right, you just go back to the end again. And that's the answer, ladies and gentlemen. That's the answer on how often you should repeat this imaginal act, right? This is what Neville told his students. This is what I tell my students. There is no number. Don't think, oh, yeah, it's always five times. It's always 10 times. No, sometimes it's once, sometimes it's 20, sometimes it's 100. I, I don't know. Like, don't, don't, even, don't even think about it in numbers and days and time here. Just bring the end state into the here and now. You want to be this, this, and that? All right. If you desire it, it's available. So you bring that end state into the here and now and experience it as already being done, right? So if you have any questions on that, leave that in the comments down below. And if you want to learn more about all of that, then you have two options. First of all, check out the first link in the video description, which is my free class, where I give you a no hype, no woo woo, no fluff kind of explanation on how the law works, how to manifest your goals, how to shift your state, how to uh, yeah, become more faithful, how you can apply this in your own life. And if you then are ready to take the next step, right? If at some point you come to the conclusion that this is all great, but I want to learn how to make this a lifestyle, I want to you know have someone that keeps me accountable and all of this stuff, then check out the second link in the video description where you can apply for a free 
consultation call with me to figure out if we are a good fit, right? So that's it for this video. The answer is when satisfaction is reached, impotence follows. When you're really satisfied, truly satisfied, because you witness the end being done, you experience it, you spiritually sense it. Remember, imagination is not daydreaming. Imagination has nothing to do with visualizing. Visualizing is one aspect of imagining, but imagining is everything you do inwardly, right? Um, having inner conversations, um, imagining scenes, hearing inner congratulations, like all the things that you do, that's all imagination, right? Everything that's not tangible yet. And when you do that long enough, right, you reach this point of, of impotence, you reach this point of satisfaction, and uh, then you kind of know it's done. And then you don't want to continue, yeah, to keep going, because that's useless, right? Who, who would continue to eat food when you're satisfied, right? Same here. So, um, right, the desire to repeat the act of prayer is lost, having been replaced by the feeling of accomplishment. And the feeling of accomplishment will be there when you go to the end and experience something that implies your wish is fulfilled through little, simple, imaginary scene. That is literally um, as easy as you can make it. Okay, so with that, I conclude this video and I'll speak to you in the next one. Bye, guys.